So, what do you guys have to say for yourselves? Not quite sure what we're saying. No, I don't know what I did. Shirts just came in. Oh. Everyone's loaded up with oh, gear. Kyle's got gear, huh? And I'm the only guy that, that can wear shirts at his house. That can wear the appropriate, <laughs> appropriate gear to farm in. I'm just disappointed right now. <laughs> So we ended the last video talking about the 620 and how it's leaking water. Titans came out and they looked at it and they think that the uh, reservoirs are just getting too much pressure in them and overflowing. Or in other words, it has a bad head gasket. So. I think we're going to unhook from the planter, hook it up to the Salford, and then probably run it in the field a bit and see if it'll throw the codes again and then somebody from Case will come out and take a look at it because, yeah, if it is a head gasket we don't want to be driving it in the field as much as, or as little as we have to, just so it doesn't wreck anything else. but. Yeah, we got our work cut out for us today because that little, last little bit of the field I had to do was pretty muddy. It was just a couple stretch, or a couple passes that I wanted to get done. I didn't want to have to come back and redo it, but yeah, it was throwing quite a bit of mud. So, yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna back this out, turn it around, and probably unhook, unhook from it for now. They're bringing the 540 out this morning and then once we get the 580 hooked up probably or the 620 hooked up to the Salford um, probably have the hired man come out and run it for a bit. Taking this row unit off I didn't want to fold it down I didn't know if it would twist something having the draw bar up this high. So we're just going to have it up in the air for a couple anyway. And on um, beans, you got to basically take it apart the same way you put it in. What's our plan for cleaning this, as you can see? I don't know yet. I mean, I think, right. uh, what, what happened? Yeah, we got into some mud in the last few passes. Hey, we got it all put in, so that's exactly. all I can ask for. Yep. Well, I think we'll start taking these row units apart, and then I think we'll figure out a decent methodology for getting all that mud off. Um, worst case scenario, when we get it all stripped apart, we might need to, like when we get the units actually off the top here, maybe we'll just run the power washer over, you know, the wheels and stuff, because yeah. that won't damage anything. My main concern with the power washer is, obviously, you don't want to be getting into the electronics and on these speed tubes also there's a electric motor and with that our the power washer i have is a high-end one for like cattle barn so it's got a lot of pressure to it good we'll take the paint off while we're at it yeah, yeah. so yeah more to come with that so yep. good thing is we only have 24 row units to do so <laughs> So we're gonna dump the bulk tanks out. We've got that little uh, piece of sheet metal to help put it into this tub here. It makes it a lot easier. Up, yep. Nope, down. Board. No more. Oh, that's good. Those plates just came out.
and this bar you just slowly pull it out. This one. Gotta take a broom and kind of push it in through the manifold. This makes it a lot easier to do it this way than trying to vacuum everything out. Working on the planter and it looks like good news has arrived. Awesome. That means uh, things are going to get done. Tillage is going to start here very soon today. Nick will be right behind him in the planter. Um, yeah, things look good. Let's just hope it's fixed. Well, we got quite the little assembly line going on here with three of us. It's nice to have another set of hands. Chad's uh, reassembling the uh, row units that are set up for beans. At the same time, he's kind of taking the corn row units off you can see these and we're getting them all cleaned up as we do this nick's over here he's actually flipping everything over for beans with the uh i'm not sure what you call the part you're putting in there uh i don't know either. it's like a little it sort of kicks the seed out of the plant. right and then he's putting those and at the same time i'm over here taking these um speed tubes apart from the uh corn and when I'm doing that I'm inspecting all the components and the <clears throat> the um, belts to make sure there's no wear that we should be getting fixed here over the winter before next spring so basically trying to deal with any potential problems before well before we ever need it so yeah I would say a few more hours here and we'll have this planter probably switched over this is the glamorous part of farming where we get to use screwdrivers, putty knives, and hammers to uh, remove the mud from the planter. It's gonna be like a, what, all afternoon project, just the mud? Yeah. <laughs> They redid the hydraulic pumps. Um, they said part of the problem was that we were hooking up the big return into that hose down there. And that's how we've always had this planter hooked up last year and yeah, last year only. But we had it hooked up to that return line. No problems, no issues, but this year for some reason it wasn't working. So, yeah, that's what they came up with. I don't know why, yeah, I asked them multiple times if that was the issue. No, no, we did it all last year, no issues, and now this year we've got a bunch of problems with it. So, we're hooking it up different now. Yeah, so what I was, how it was explained to me is that that return line we were hooked up to just returns back to the tank. Yep. And then when we use the port here, that actually goes to the pump yeah exactly so we'll use this port here and that actually goes directly into the pump so it's like gives that instant you know yep. refill of the fluid hydraulic fluid that it seems to need so i mean all in theory that's what's going on but really you'll know within a couple hours of Five. of um yep. planting for sure if if yep. you can't run pretty Five. much you know whatever pace you want then there's something wrong still so Well, they're uh, rolling with the sulfur now, getting started. That's the uh, 620 that potentially they think has a head gasket issue. So they're really just out there working it, trying to get it to throw a code. And then the <clears throat> service manager here from Titan is out and he wants to get out and look um, to see if he thinks that's exactly what it is or if it maybe is something more simple. So right now, we're just kind of walking here and looking at 
the seed bed and still pretty wet. Yeah. Surprisingly wet. But I mean look at it, dust is I want well that's from uh packing snow there over the winter. Don't dust, come up here and look. Dust is flying, but you know, you get under that surface just a little bit and it's pretty wet. It's pretty loose though, Nick. Yeah, I need to get a hold of Brian. Have him come out and see what he thinks. Just make sure it's the right thing. It can't go deeper. They say shallow, Chad. Say shallow. Shallow flat is all you're going for. Basically, this the whole purpose of this is literally just to like basically smooth out your seed bed is my understanding. Planner. I mean it's good to me, it's pretty smooth. Yeah. Look we'll at Brian. I like it, but I feel like he's gonna have some concerns. So we're on this field here where we're gonna start with beans. Um, we got Brian out here, he's an agronomist, consults with basically everything we're doing. So um, what are we looking? We're basically checking and make sure the sulfur is um, kind of doing the tillage job that we want, achieving like that nice flat seed bed. And then we're also in some of these low spots here, just making sure we're not pushing it with the tillage to, you know, and causing, I guess, issues for when we're planting here. The forecast looks like it's gonna be pretty pretty nice, warm, sunny, um, so things will dry out. So we're just making sure we're not getting too far ahead of the game, I guess, with tillage and some of these wetter areas. Yeah, I think we'd like to hunt down a field that's dry enough so we can get that planter set for beans, because obviously when you change over, yeah, you wanna get the planting depth set again and population set, the monitor set. So when it is go time, which hopefully by tomorrow, we can really roll, but everything's just a little tacky. Yesterday was really cold and kind of cloudy, so we didn't get a lot accomplished on the drying side. So today, much better. Right. Yeah, so we're probably in the lowest spot right now. There's a tile intake right there, so clearly it's low. And I mean, this is, you kind of, I mean, it's your pure mud there. So it varies pretty widely it goes from you know areas like this and then you get up on the hills and of course dust you know it's it's dry enough but i think that's what we'll do is try to check and see if there is something that's pretty much ready because like you said it'd be good to get a, a little bit of a jump and getting that planter calibrated on a day like today or early tomorrow so that <clears throat> you're not wasting you know start oh start monday morning and then you mess around for half the day with that so uh, I think we maybe want to consider going out to Oscars with tillage. That's probably the driest land you got. I know it's not where you want to start. That's also not very dry. Really? Oh, I thought you guys cut it <laughs> out. But... Oh yeah, that. That's a lake bottom. <laughs> There's some, still some low spots in those fields too. <laughs> no, I, that's going to be the driest ground you got around here where you got to wait at least one day if not two. And I think the tillage is going to look like it's taking out the little weeds, but I don't think it's going to. It's just going to cover them up, so we're probably going to have to switch sure. to a burn down, which means it's probably easier to go total post with the herbicide. So, sure. yeah, yeah, it's just too tacky here to get going on tillage today. That's why, unless somebody scouted out Oscar's really good, that'd be the only spot to consider. I is think it, no matter what, right now it's going to take a day after you till it. Yeah. No, that's why you'd want to till at anything till today. You'd have to sit a day, and then to even roll it, it's going to have to sit a day. Still planning on that? Yeah, I think it's optional if it's fine and you got enough manpower to do it. But sure. rolling is not absolutely necessary. I'll probably have Riker do do the home field and see what it looks like, right. and then if you think it's good, have him keep going. Yep. Uh, and there's you got an award-winning rock out on the home 80 here you got to go pick up too it's like 
good bone ornament. Perfect. Yeah, it's in one of those draw, like almost in a sure. washout. But um, sure. I, if he was out there in the tractor, I have no idea how he missed it because that's like a 500 well, how, pounder. Was it like that far out? No, like laying no, up on laying top, on the ground. and it's, it's like yeah. somebody pulled it out already. It's just sitting there. And we looked at the you know lake field to call it, and you know we could ponder on no-till in that. I was just I mean, this on. this will go through it, but you yeah. know the whole thing's not tilled, so it's just. I was just planning on having them try it. Yeah. Sure. No, Use that'll work too. It, but, but. And that again, that's got some wet spots in it. Yeah. Basically, everything we looked at it looked like 95% dry, mixed with those wet spots enough to the point where it's like maybe just give it a day and yeah. let those catch up, and then it's all good instead of. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you know 95 i guess but yep. we definitely don't want you bringing a planter back that's going to put that much dirt on the ground again we're not doing that again <laughs> yeah. until it's the last day I, of planting and i just want to get it in i can't done i was like mm, that couldn't have been good when i saw this thing last night i came out here and i'm like oh my gosh Wild. Um, what do you want us to go for in depth again? We're going B3, which is supposed to put it at an inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter? D3, I got that written down on our note card, and um, that way we don't forget. But he said we'll have to check it because... D3, is that with the bevel? Yeah, back. Towards, uh, towards us. Yeah. So we'll make sure we get those all flipped around and then actually yep. check the depth. And if we have to adjust, I'll just write down whatever adjustment we make. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Sounds good. So yeah, I guess four inches of rain or whatever we got makes it stay wet for what a week. Yeah, it's been a whole week. The good news is that first planted cornfield looks fantastic. So yeah, when you can go, it's work. So we're wrapping up the video now. It was a pretty good day. We got the 540 back. Well, that should be good go for planting. We're thinking. Uh, couple days yet one for sure maybe two before it gets dry enough to plant we got the 620 still going on tillage somehow and it's not leaking any coolant they're not getting any of the lights to come on so he's putting the hammer down on that gonna try and get a ways out ahead of me there's gonna be a few spots that he can't get to just because it's too wet but yeah today was a pretty good day we had the like my buddy, he's an electrician, he came out and wired up our heater that got put in this winter, early winter. We were just running an extension cord to it, but he got a box put up there now, so that was something good to get done. We got all the monitors switched around now, so they should all be good to go. And all the mud and dirt is off the planter for the most part. We made a pretty good mess, but yeah, that's about all I can think of. You got anything else we need to recap? No, I think the we got a lot done. We got the planter all switched over, mm -hmm. and I think the biggest thing is once it dries out, we're in a position where we actually have everything working and set up, and it's we yep. can, you know you're working a 16-hour day to work a 16-hour day, not a 16-hour day to plant for yep. three four hours. So. Then we got this 580 here, so if we do have any breakdowns, we're hopefully hour and a half tops. Right, flip the monitor, right yeah, it. switch yep. monitors out and go. So Well, the only thing we'd have to flip, switch monitors is, is if this tractor breaks down again. If the 620 does, that's just hook right back up and go. Perfect. So, yeah, so we've been basically down to one tractor most of the spring, then a loner, mm -hmm. then down to one. Then we had two at one point for about a four hour period and now we're sitting with three three so tracks. we actually we actually have a little bit of um extra insurance i guess so yep. i realistically think what do we have 800 acres of beans about eight to nine hundred right yeah. so beans obviously you need to fill up substantially more. more i think we have 20 boxes so mm -hmm. a thousand units of yep. beans to plant um so the biggest thing is going to be making sure that we have the tender rolling that's yep. going to be the main limitation on how much we can get done in a day but really eight nine hundred acres with all the drive time and stuff we're talking three pretty 
average, pretty decent days. Yep. Not crazy, but well, and that's the nice part. Beans this year, it's all around home for the most part. We got maybe what 250, 200 acres that aren't close to home. Ever just about all the acres are within a mile of right here. There's maybe 200 that are more than 10 miles, but it'll go quick once it gets going. So, looking forward to doing putting some beans in the ground. So, if you like the video, like, subscribe, leave us a comment if you have any questions, concerns, or just want to say hi. But thank you for watching. Till next time.